So let's get into uh, the seminar itself. So exploratory online seminar number 32. Uh, today we want to cover exploratory data analysis part, part two. Um, this is about correlation and association. And then like in the uh, previous seminar, uh, I introduced Wayne Gretzky, who was a legend of ice hockey. And he, one of the quote, um, the famous quote was, I skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. Um, it's kind of like, a, you know, it's cool, but uh, it, at the same time, it's kind of obvious. Uh, but it's really what uh, is, you know, trying to say is it's, this is about prediction, right? So we want to predict, you know, the, how things going to be. So, for example, if you have a business, then you have customers, then like you want to understand like how much, uh, how many customers is going to be in a one month or six months or you know a year or whatever down the road. <clears throat> so that's a prediction. And then there's another uh, famous player called Kan Nishida says, "I control where the pack is going to be, not the pack controls where I should be." And obviously, this I just made it up, and and, and uh, probably this is not going to happen. I don't think you, nobody can control where the pack is. I mean, like when you hit the pack, maybe. Um, but definitely, uh, this might uh, be kind of like um, over optimistic, and that's probably the reason I'm not the high ice hockey player. Anyway. Um, so you might want to control the future, though, not just the predicting. But in order to control, you need a special. Uh, you need to find a special relationship in the data. But nonetheless, so what can we do, what can we do to make that happen? And I think this is the ultimate uh, sort of like a goal, right? If you can do this, then your business can for sure thrive. So let's say like you will have the target number of customers, 100 customers by end of this month, and then you wanna know like what you should do, right? So maybe you might wanna discount, give it a discount, like 10% discount, 50% discount, whatever, to hit that target or something. And if you wanna you know, predict, let's say, there's certain many things you can't control, but you know, one, of the, uh, one of the things is uh, weather. Then if it's raining, then you know, this is how much of the ice cream you're going to be able to sell. Uh, if it's you know, sunny, this is how, much of the, how many of the ice cream you can sell, something like that. So either way, so to predict the control, uh, you, you know, this is a sort of like the goal of your data analysis. Then this weather, you know, for example, if it's sunny, this is the you know, number of the ice cream you can sell. Or if you give it a discount, maybe like this is you know, how many ice cream can sell, those are considered hypotheses. You come up with those idea, but you haven't, you're not sure, you haven't tested yet, uh, you haven't uh, observed the data yet. And then you have the hypothesis. In the science, you want to test it, right? So you want to experiment. Let's say like, hey, you know, um, let's give it a discount. Or maybe like, let's see like, you know, uh, what, what, what the weather like. And then if it's sunny or raining, like let's observe it and let's collect the data. <clears throat> and then based on the, by using the data, you test the hypothesis. They, whatever the hypothesis survive throughout those testing, then you can sort of like keep going uh, along with the hypothesis. If the test reveal that, you know, your hypothesis doesn't stand, then you want to reject the hypothesis and you want to come up with a new hy different hypothesis. So those are the uh, type of the analysis called confirmatory analysis. I talked about this in the last session as well. I just want to uh, uh, <clears throat> make sure our sort of a grounding for today's. So then now, how can we come up with the hypothesis? And of course, intuition, right? So if you, that, this is why the subject matter uh, uh, expertise is so important, actually. If you are in a certain business for long, in doing a long time, like you kind of know uh, based on the experience. But also at the same time, like intuition might deceive you too, it might have some kind of bias as well. So, then like in this day and age, like we have tons of data about the transactions, the customers or whatever, think how can we, how about the data? Can we use the data? And it turned out there is a way to build a hypothesis based on the data. And then this gentleman, John Turkey, Turkey, this is like back in the day, like 60s and 70s, uh, built a method uh, called exploratory data analysis and published a book called exploratory data analysis. Um, 
But what the exploratory data analysis really is, is really by exploring the data, then tr try to build a hypothesis. Instead of like just the start, start, starting point of the data analysis used to be the, your intuition or hypothesis, and they use the data to test. But instead, his, you know, he, his idea was like, hey, we have the data. There's a lot more going on in the data, and there's a lot more insights we can get to help, help building a hypothesis. So that's really the exploratory data analysis uh, was kind of like, um, had started had started. So exploratory uh, iterative process of asking many questions and find answers from data in order to build better hypotheses for explanation and prediction and control. And this is where like uh, the whole prediction and control come in. But uh, you know uh, it's. Uh, uh, this explanation is very important too. So, like how things are, like you know what, you know why this is happening. You want to explain. We are human beings. We, we always want to explain everything. So it turned out data actually helps you do that. So now, asking many questions to the data, um, then data might be able to help you to find the answers. But how? What? What other questions should we ask? And that's uh, uh, two principal questions for EDA, exploratory data analysis. The first one is how the variation in variable, that is the one that we talked about last week. Then the second, how are the variables associated or correlated to one another? So let's say that we have the employee data, that this is the data we have been using. <clears throat> then we want to understand how the salary is decided in this organization. And then when you look at the you know salary, you know you can come up with the mean or average. It turned out to be six thousand five hundred three dollars. But uh, you know, like the average doesn't really tell you much. It's just one you know summarized number. As you see, this is like a histogram visualizing the distribution or variance of the, uh, the employee salary in this company. And then there are a lot of people you know uh, making much less than. Or you know, few less, little less than the average. But also, there's a significant number of the people, or a sizable number of the people, right hand side, making a lot higher than the average salary. Right. So data varies, and this is very normal. Like any data you have, like you never have like only one single number. Like you always have a different type of numbers. But uh, so this variance, so like you want to understand this variance, how the variance is, and that's the uh, last week's seminar. Just in case, I'm going to show you how you can find that seminar. Go to exploratory.io, our website, and then at the top menu, there's a run, and then under the run, there's an online seminar. When you click on it, then the page shows you that what are the uh, online seminars planned. And then when you scroll down, there is a link for the past seminars. When you click on it, and it shows you the, all the uh, seminars we have done in the past. <clears throat> okay, in this case, uh, happened to be the left hand side top online seminar number thirty one. That's the one. Okay, so assuming you have already seen that, um, then the, the variance is an opportunity for data analysis. It's actually a good thing. So if you don't have the variance, then your data analysis is done. Like you're interested in how this uh, you know company's monthly income or salary is decided. And it turned out everybody's getting twenty thousand dollars. Then there's no point of even like you know making a data analysis, right? So it is good thing the data varies, and the variance is a good starting point for building hypothesis of association or causal even even causal relationship. So if there is variance, then we can ask what makes the variance, and then you can start invest, uh, investigation. So in this case, what makes monthly income different in this company? For example, is that a male or female? Does gender matter? Or maybe the number of the years you spend in this company, does that matter? Such, uh, such things. So the association and correlation, and then both of them basically the similar thing, uh, basically a relationship where changes in one variable happen together with changes in another variable with a certain rule. And association is a, an, any type of relationship between two variables. And correlation is a little bit more strict, uh, especially around the two numerical uh, variables. Um, it, this slide doesn't say numerical, but it should be two numerical variables. 
And then usually, this, when we, people talk about correlation, usually it means a linear uh, relationship. So, it, you know, it doesn't change the rela uh, course of the relationship at a certain point of the data. Let's say, like, uh, even you have the age, and you don't want to have the relationship change when you become 20 or 40 or 50. You want to expect the same type of the relationship. Um, that's a correlation. But you know, like I'm not an academia person, so I don't want to go into like a strict like a definition or something like that. I want to uh, go along with more loosened uh, definition. So like you know, correlation association, maybe words are different, uh, but it, at the end of the day, we want to understand the relationship between variables. Um, and then association, for example, when you have a country, it turned out this, com uh, this is like a fictional uh, 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 fictional uh, image, but uh, depends on the country that people make different uh, income. And in that case, it looks like there's a relationship between the country and uh, monthly income. And then the country is categorical, not numerical. So we uh, tend to call those uh, type of relationships as association. <clears throat> Then the correlation in this case, we have like hey, this company, like when you uh, get older, you get uh, even paid better or paid higher. And that's both of them, age, monthly income, those are numbers or numerical variables. So therefore we call uh, correlation. By the way, when I said variable, uh, variable is, means usually the column, uh, when you have like Excel kind of data, usually the column. Uh, sometimes it's not, but most of the time, like it, it, uh, it's a column or uh, any uh, sort of metric, that metric or the uh, sort of like um, uh, information that change. So the monthly income, age, uh, so on. Anyway, and the correlation, uh, it, we have this thing, the correlation if, um, um, value. So we use minus one to one sort of a scale to indicate the strength of the correlation. So when you have zero, there is no correlation. When you have one, that's the most, uh, I mean, like the strongest positive uh, correlation. It's almost like one value, uh, value decided on the one variable, then the other is decided in a very uh, specific way. Uh, there's no, you know, sort of variance around, around around that. <clears throat> and then the opposite is um, uh, minus one, which means the strongest negative correlation. One variable goes up, then the other variable goes down. So uh, that's that negative. <clears throat> so if we can find the correlation between monthly income and work, working years, for example, then uh, we, we can start predicting based on the working years. For example, if you are working 20 years, then probably like we can estimate uh, how much monthly income you are going to be making. And then if we can find a strong correlations, then it makes it easier to explain how monthly income changes. And not only that, also we can predict what monthly income will be. And here is warning. Uh, I talked about that this uh, last week as well. The correlation is not equal to causation. This is almost like a, a cliche. Uh, I start kind of like a, uh, hating this uh, saying uh, because everybody says this uh, as a kind of like a smirk with a smirk. Uh, but uh, but it's still important. Uh, you know, correlation. We we human being, even the experts, even the people who's teaching uh, causal inference, tend to get. Uh, confused with this. So this is not like, you know, uh, just understanding correlation is not equal to causation doesn't mean you're always understanding. I mean, it's very uh, compli uh, complicated subject. I can go on uh, forever. But anyway, uh, this is a different. And I want to actually talk about that a little bit in, uh, later uh, today. <clears throat> but if we can confirm a given correlation, if you find a correlation, that's the first step, then that's actually the causation. If you can uh, sort of like confirm, you can test it, then it turned out, hey, this is, seems like a caus causation, then that's amazing because now you can control the future or the outcome of the, uh, so what's going to happen based on your action. So that's sort of like ultimate goal, but you know, hey, reality is never be that easy. <clears throat> but anyway, so we have this mon uh, employee data, we have monthly income, and we wanna, know, we wanna understand like, how uh, monthly income, income changes. 
So let's actually do it. Uh, start. Uh, let me just work on this one. Uh, here we go. So I have already imported that data, uh, employee data, right? So then, um, so we have like age and attrition and all that stuff. And then what we are interested in is this like monthly income. That's what we are interested in. Okay. And then now, <clears throat> okay. And here's a correlate button. So like I'm going to click it. And then like it's already been selected. Usually like when you open, it, it shows up something like this. Then like this is where like you want to select that subject or the variable we, you're interested in this case monthly income so i select the monthly income and what happened is now that like, i can see the relationship between the monthly income and all these variable so for example here age i can see that this is like x-axis is the age so like 20 years to 60 years old and then like a, a y-axis is um, the monthly income so looks like for example if you happen to be in this company though, uh, between 34 years old and 39, then your the average income you can expect as uh, almost like $6,000 or so. <clears throat> and then for example, uh, here, because there's attrition, then uh, let's go to the department. That's more kind of fun. Um, so if you department, if, if you happen to be in a research and a development department, and this is how much you would be expecting, uh, you you would expect. <clears throat> and there are like about 961 people. And this chart is called error bar. The first time you see it, you get kind of confused what this chart is. But it's a, it's a when you look at the kind of dot at the middle of the each line, that's actually showing you the average or mean precisely so and then there's a bar those are, that's the range so what is that range that is a range here you can actually control it you can change it the default is 95 percent confidence in total then what is the confidence in total right so uh, let's take a look just quickly um i'm going to just go very high level so in this statistic world statistics world and you know we consider the Left hand side is something called population, and the right hand side is something called sample. But that really is is like left hand side is a real data. It's like all the data as much uh, as you can imagine, and the right side is the data that you have in your hands. In this case, for example, that we have like um, about fourteen hundred people, like one thousand four hundred people, uh, employee data in our hand in the exploratory or in the Excel, or whatever. <clears throat> But that doesn't mean that like, that's the only potential employee of this com company. We might happen to have, uh, you know, get this one, but, you know, we might be missing some of the employee. Or next day, there were new employee. Or maybe next day, some of the employee we have in the data might be leaving. So, like, how can we know, like, the real meaning that, in a real meaning sense, that these are the all employee, sort of like for this particular uh, company of our interest? So we, in, in the, the world of statistics, we tend to think those the real numbers we don't know. Um, so, and then, but what we know for sure is in our hands. That is, we tend we we call uh, we call it sample by the data in our hands. But we know that that's the, we know the mean in this case. For example, uh, five thousand two hundred dollars or something. This number might be different from the the one that we saw in exploratory. But let's say like we, we know these numbers, but we don't know the true mean. So then what we can do is, hey, you know what? Like we have, we know the mean is $5,200, but we don't know the true mean, like a real sort of like a uh, mean, uh, mean of monthly income. Then how about like we just put some range, your kind of like margin of error or whatever the range, and then if we have the range and we want to say, hey, you know what, real values, I mean, like if we, if we even take like a um, sample or like the data tomorrow or yesterday, or, um, you know, somebody just came in and knock, knocking the door like, and telling me like, hey, like I'm missing some, uh, we, you know, here's another extra data for this company or something like that. But even then, like every time you calculate the mean, it should be within this range. That, that, can we generate that kind of range? 
And that is the confidence interval. And then there's a difference, uh, 95%, 90%, 99%. I'm not going to go into that detail. In general, people use 95% in a, most of the time. So I'm going to go with the 95%. And then the 95% confidence in total that what it really mean, what's 95% really mean is if we take the samples from the same population or same like entire data set, and then we take it from like, you know, let's say like, you know, 10,000 people is the real numbers of employee or whatever. And then like we take 100 people and then many, many times again and again and again. And each time you calculate the mean and then you draw the range by using that same method, the same way of calculation. Then, then 95% of all those confidence intervals that we draw should have the true mean, meaning true mean should reside somewhere, somewhere, we don't know, but should be within those confidence interval lines. And then when you have like 100 confidence interval lines or 100 samples, 95% or 95 of them should include that confidence interval of 95 should include the true mean. That, that's really 95% uh, confidence interval mean. And the same thing, 99% confidence interval, that means if you have 100 samples and 100 mean and 100 confidence interval, and then 99 of them should include true mean. That's, we are talking about an estimate though. Um, so when you draw like a 95, uh, sorry, like a hundred of, um, you know, samples and they have the confidence in towards, then maybe like the only five might be missing, might, might not be including the true mean. So that's really the uh, nutshell in a confidence in total. But anyway, so it, it, it's actually kind of cool to have this one because then typical use, uh, use cases, for example, when you look at this attrition, uh, second from the left at the top, then those confidence in total range are not sort of like, uh, what do you call it, like covering each other. That means there is a difference, kind of significant difference between no and yes. But when you look at the business travel, all of them, those three bars, including the confidence in total, it's kind of like a covering each other. So then, hey, you know, true value, true mean, we are not sure where that is within that line. So therefore, it might be around the same, might be even like the order is different. So therefore, we cannot say, hey, there's a difference between left-hand side bar and the middle bar and the right-hand side bar and so on. So, that's a strong tool, actually. Um, <clears throat> but then another way to test those relationships is basically there's a, a matrix R square P value correlation. And one of them is called P value. Uh, wait a second. Let's just go to the, uh, yeah, a P value. And that's basically another way to test the relationship. So we use the confidence interval and the confidence interval is really, hey, like, you know, we don't know where the two means. So therefore we try to, uh, let's use the uh, range. And if the range is not covering or like um, overstepping, then we can sort of, we can conclude, hey, there's a um, difference between those two or those three or whatever. But uh, sometimes if you wanna do even more, sort of like a robust test and then you want to use a hypothesis test. So this is either way. I mean, you, you don't have to do both. I mean, typically like you do one and sometimes you combine in a rare case, but um, <clears throat> try to basically test the relationship. And the other one is like using a p-value, but in this case, in the exploratory is correlation mode, it said KW test. That means classical Wallace test. And the classical Wallace test is one of the hypothesis tests or statistical tests uh, methods. Uh, is to use, it, it is used to test if the difference in the variance among variables that's significant or not, with no assumption of normality in the target variable. Ooh, there are too many uh, sentences. So there are various types of hypothesis tests. There are more than it listed here. But let's say that when you want to try test Let's say, like, uh, you know, like in this case, we're comparing the means, for example, and you want to test the two groups. Let's say the male and the female, uh, is there any like a difference in terms of the uh, monthly income? Then you can use something called t-test. 
and if you have multiple groups and more than two, let's say um, um, the business travel is like no travel, rarely, you know, sometimes, and all the time, and you have three categories now, right? Three groups now. And in that case, you can use ANOVA test. But the problem is this T-test and ANOVA test, these are a little more strict in, because they expect the data, original data, to be normally distributed. And then, you know, most of the time, like you have, the, you get the data, the data is normal distribution. Normal distribution is like the mean as a center, and then left and right is a kind of a sy symmetric, and then <clears throat> sort of like a kind of a bell curve. Uh, shape. Anyway, so you know, if you can't expect your data to be in that shape all the time, so then you can use something called, uh, called Wilcoxon test or Kraskar Wars test. In this case, we are talking about the Kraskar Wars test. In the, the expert world or the statistics, we call it like parametric or non parametric. So, with the assumption, assuming there is the distribution of the original data is normal, normal distribution, that is called parametric. And then the other one, the no assumption is called non-parametric. Um, that word is you know, not that big deal here. Uh, so I want you to know the various types of tests. And then classical voice test is actually, as you can see, it's actually sort of like super flexible because it doesn't have to be like two groups or more groups. It doesn't matter. You can even use for two groups as well, by the way. So it doesn't have to be more than three or more than two. It, it can be two. And then it doesn't have assumptions, so you can use for the data with a normal distribution or not normal distribution. Um, and then the result will be so you know, much different if you use cross words test and ANOVA or cross words test and T-test. Most of the time, you get ended up like getting a similar result anyway. So um, that, that's sort of a reason like we actually use cross words test even exploratory as well. Okay. <clears throat> And then the p-value, what is this p-value thing? Um, well, this is a, uh, more, uh, more, one of the most controversial um, uh, metric, especially these days, but I'm gonna go uh, explain uh, anyway. So, so it indicates the probability of observing the relationship that you know, like we are seeing in front of our, our eyes. For example, age and the monthly income. Looks like uh, you know, correlation, uh, correlated relationship or something. And then if that relationship uh, is not, you know, something that we can expect all the time, even if there is no relationship between the age and the monthly income, for example. <clears throat> so the text says monthly income and job level. So I, I kind of switch that to uh, age or working years, whatever. But under the assumption of like, hey, these two variables have no relationship whatsoever. But it, you know, the data has always a sort of like a random, right? So you might expect some kind of change, some kind of relation. It looks like some, uh, all as if like there's a relationship. But that can happen even when two variables have no relationship. But the relationship, the strong strength of the relationship or amount of the relationship we are seeing here is something special or not. And that's sort of like uh, the p-value can basically tell you like how much uh, you know the probability you're going to get. So if there is no relationship, and then you get uh, let's say the p-value is almost like a, in this case let's say zero point zero 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 one, or let's say like almost zero, then that means you're not going to get this kind of relationship. Like, you know, for example, like sort of like a correlation related relationship. Um, almost impossible to see this if you assume these two variables, let's say the age and the monthly income, have no relationship whatsoever. But you are seeing the relationship in front of you. So that means your assumption is wrong. So you can reject the assumption. That means age and the monthly income have the relationship instead of not relationship. So base, the p-value is smaller the p-value is than it easier to conclude that there is a relationship. And the opposite side is that when the p-value is bigger, let's say like 30%, 0.3 equals means 30% or 0.5, 50% or something like that. Then even if you assume, let's say like age and monthly income has no relationship, but whatever the relationship you're seeing can happen. Like a, even uh, sort of like randomly. 
uh, you know, maybe like if you try, if you test twice and then maybe once, once in a two tests and then you get this kind of change. And that's what the p-value is saying. So uh, there's a lot more about this p-value thing, but uh, I don't have time, unfortunately, but um, it, it really, that's what it is. So when you see the p-value smaller, um, then you sort of like, um, uh, you want to investigate further. Uh, hey, you know, there's something here where like if you have like let's say like a 0 0.3 or 4 or 5 and the p-value is higher then you don't want to waste your time to dig in that area too much because there are other opportunities for finding more useful insights so that's sort of like kind of an indicator and p-value is not the god so the value itself is not the answer it just helps you uh you know what you should do next <clears throat> In this case, when you see like 0 .0, uh, less than 0 0.001, that means, hey, there's something going on here. Okay, so, and then, now you can visualize the relationship uh, from the column header, and then you click on the scatter chart or error bar or bar chart and so on. And then the, the correlation especially, is, is even like when you say, see like a correlation value is like 0 0.5, 0 0.7, that relationship can be very different. Uh, so the number itself is the indicator, but it doesn't really give you the full picture. So I always um, recommend you visualize to see what the relationship is. And then, you know, you get the scatter chart, another chart view, um, in this case, a uh, scatter chart. And then here, when you look at it here though, uh, at the bottom, it's, it's, this is job level. Sorry, this is like a, uh, here. This is a job level. And the job level is actually turned out it's a one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> it's more like a categorical instead of like a numerical. And in that case, you can still use a scatter chart, but I would recommend using the box plot. And the box plot shows you uh, sort of like a range um, um, of the data. And then the box shows you the 50% from the center, which is median. Uh, of the data. And then that bottom and the top, those like a line, it shows you the minimum value and the maximum values. So you can quickly see, you know, um, the, how the data distributed for each category, in this case, for each um, uh, job level. <clears throat> okay. And then you can invest, investigate the correlation with linear regression model. So we visualize it and we get the idea sort of like intuitively. But from here, you can actually even uh, extend further. And then that's where the prediction model called linear regression uh, comes in. And then you can also build that uh, from the column header menu. And then let's, let's do that from here. So, so let's say, um, <clears throat> we, oh, by the way, we can sort by these like a correlation or those values as well. So like let's do, use the correlation. And the correlation is really the higher the number is positive, the higher, then that means a positive correlation relationship. Did I say it right? Okay. And then and the, the lower, and if we, especially like uh, sort of like um, uh, negative, that means you have the negative correlation. <clears throat> But anyway, so like we have the job level and then total working years. And then like, hey, you know what? Like I want to see the, uh, the relationship. I want to investigate the relationship between monthly income and job level further. And then you can actually click on this create linear regression from the column header menu. And this will uh, build a prediction model, a linear regression model. And it give you all the information that you, uh, uh, that's helpful. So under the prediction, so this is sort of a uh, one, two, three, four, five, that's a job level. And each section, like one, job level is one, job level is two, and it gives you um, the average, which is like a gray line, that's like a, a, a mean value. And then the blue, that is the model. And the linear regression is really um, <clears throat> the straight line um, uh, prediction. Uh, model. So how much time do we have? Okay, 20 minutes. And then let me just quickly go on. What is linear regression like I'm, I'm talking about? So I, I'm going to just talk about quickly. So let's say that you have data like this, working years, monthly income, and then like five people around here. And then linear regression model is trying to draw the line uh, to go in the middle. 
And uh, in more precise way I was explaining is that, that each, the difference or the distance or difference between the person and then this line, that difference to be minimum. So I like, try to figure out where should I draw the line to make those lines or the difference to be minimum. And that's really what the linear regression algorithm uh, try to do to build this, uh, to draw this line. And this line itself or the math, mathematic formula to draw this line is considered as the linear regression model. <clears throat> So in this case, monthly income equal 500 uh, multiplied working years plus 5,000. And the 500 in this case is called slope or coefficient. That means one year increase in working years, this is how much you can uh, expect uh, for the monthly incomes uh, change or increase. And then the, the last 5,000 part is that when you have the working years as zero, then how much monthly income you can expect. And then with this, this is the model. And then the linear regression algorithm tried to come up with this. Like a, this is called uh, parameters for 500, 5,000. And that's what it does. And then so simple linear regression, y equal a multiply x plus b. And then um, that, that itself, that formula is the model. And then what we just did in exploratory is that like a, let the algorithm figure it out, that formula, and then gives us information based on that formula. <clears throat> So when you look at it, if you go to the coefficient dot table, and then you see those coefficient column. Uh, I thought we had a coefficient column. Um, okay. Then that said intercept minus 1,839, and then job level is 4,041. And then based, on, based on these two numbers, you can actually come up with that uh, formula of the linear regression model. And when you go to the summary view, and it says R square, and the most left hand side, it says 0 0.90. And R square is how good this model performs compared to the neural model. Neural model is just a, whatever the um, uh, age is, working years is, it's always return mean or average. And compared to that kind of, kind of dumb model, that like how you know, uh, this, this model we just built, the linear regression model is better. Um, but also, uh, the much better way to explain that R square is it's really it, it, how much this um, uh, given variable, in this case, working years or like job level, can explain the variance of the target variable, in this case, monthly income. So, and that's what R square really is. And then the last part is a, it's, it's actually, if you have a simple linear degradation model, meaning one, uh, you know, variable to one target variable, monthly income and a job level. In that case, it's actually the square of the correlation. Um, when you start having a more predictable variables and things are a little bit different, but if it's simple, then it's really the square of the correlation. <clears throat> and then it can be between zero and one, one being the highest, zero means basically no relationship. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I'm gonna just skip this part. Um, here. Uh, okay. So there's another one, for example, total working years, same thing, create linear integration, and then you get something like this. And then you see like, okay, how that monthly income change when uh, working years change. And you can see that kind of relationship under the prediction tab. And then you go to the coefficient uh, table tab, then you can see the uh, slope and the y-intercept, right? So then this is the linear deviation model. <clears throat> you go to the coefficient tab, then that coefficient um, information along with the p-value being visualized along with the 95% confidence interval line. So this also, uh, it's basically the same information between the coefficient and the coefficient table. Now, one question though, so, I want to talk about a little bit of the correlation and the causation thing. Um, so, you might have seen this picture. So, as uh, you know, the month becomes May and June, July, and it turned out the more shark attacks being reported, but also uh, more ice cream getting sold. 
And then when you look at the chart, when you look at the data, looks like these two are correlated. So therefore, if you want to increase the ice cream sales, then you might want to invite more sharks. Or if you want to reduce the number of the attacks from the shark, then maybe you want to stop selling ice cream. And of course, you're not going to do that, right? And that's because uh, those two don't have the direct relationship or even cause a relationship whatsoever. It, act, it turned out there's a, the temperature, when the temperature becomes hotter, and of course people want to eat more ice cream, and also uh, people tend to go into the water because water becomes warmer, uh, then you have more chance to get attacked by the shark. Uh, so, but when you look at only the ice cream shark attack, almost like there is a relationship, and even like some people might think there's a causal relationship, but there is no relationship between there or in terms of like a causal relationship. It turned out the hotness or the temperature is the cause uh, to make those two things change, right? And those are called co confounding, and then um, this is very confusing. Um, it's hard to find all the information. But in this case, for example, now we know the job level and monthly income have the relationship, and it means there's a, some kind of correlation going on. <clears throat> and then the job level is higher, then the monthly income is also become higher, right? So the also another thing we know is the monthly income and the working years, there seems to be a, re there's a relationship. And then um, the arrow is going to point to the left, but we don't know which direction at this point. But at least we know there is a correlation between them. And when you look at this chart, uh, the longer you work on, at this company, the higher the monthly income becomes. Seems like there's some kind of relationship there. So then when you draw the sort of like a diagram, job level at the top, working at the right hand side, and the monthly income on the left hand side, this seems like a job level, monthly income, working years, monthly income, there's some kind of like a relationship. And we even, as a human, seems like there's a cause, you know, causal relationship or something. But when you investigate further between job level and working years, there might be relationship there. And then you can actually use the summary views correlation mode. And then just all you need to do is change that subject of your interest to be job level. Then, it turned out the working years and the job level also have that relationship. The correlation is 0.78, R squared is 0.6. That means the variance of the job level can be, 60% uh, of the variance of the job level can be explained by the total working years. So there's a relationship there, a correlation. We don't know the direction, but there seems to be some kind of relationship there. Then it's confusing because is working years really impacting on the monthly income? Maybe the job level is the one has impacting on the monthly income change. And if we assume that's the case, then when the job level changes, let's say job level goes from one to two or two to three, then probably we expect monthly incomes to change. But also when the job level change, of course, working years are also going to change because those two have the correlated relationship. Then maybe like when we saw the working years and the monthly income, those are seems like they have the relationship, but that might be the result of job level being changed. Or the other case uh, we can think about too, if job level really the one changing the monthly income, maybe working years is actually the one changing the monthly income or has an impact on the monthly income. And if that's the case, when the working years change and the monthly income change and the working years change and the job level change as well, then we might happen to be looking at the result of the working years change, which is job level goes, gets higher, monthly income gets higher, therefore we saw all oh, job level and monthly income have the relationship or they, if, even like a causal relationship or something. So that gets kind of confusing. The, how can we know the effect of only the job level and when the only job level change, how much of the monthly income, does the monthly income change? Or if working years change, only the working years change and if the monthly income change, how can we know that independent or um, uh, effect or, you know, one variable alone uh, effect. <clears throat> it turned out there's a very simple way to do it. 
in, in a concept. Uh, anyway, why don't we just hold one of the variables to be constant? Just fix it. So let's say the job level, don't move it, just only one. And then we collect all the people with job level one and then get rid of two or three or four. And then with only that data and then see like if the working years change and the monthly income change or not. And if it doesn't change, that means there's no relationship between working years and the monthly income. And in, uh, it actually, the relationship here is a job level and the monthly income. And vice versa, what if we want to investigate the impact or effect of the job level, then why don't we just hold working years constant? That means only the 10 years of working as people or the 20 years of people, or, you know, 25. And then within that each group, then let's observe, let's uh, see like when the job level is different and then are those people, the, the monthly income also the difference or not? <clears throat> and it, it turned out the concept seems, seems uh, it's not like a crazy, but also uh, to do is it turned out it's not that complicated because we can just use the same linear regression model. Only the difference is instead of simple, we make it multiple. So what's the difference? Well, simple is in this case, y equal a multiply x plus b, like a one point increase in the x variable would expect the change of the a in y variable. So monthly income equal 500 multiply working years plus uh, 5,000, then one year increase in working years would expect $500 increase in monthly income. Multiple linear regression is all we do is just add extra variable. This doesn't have to be two or three. I mean, it can be three or four and uh, many. But in this case, one point increase in X variable with X1 precisely in this case, expect a change of A in Y variable when all other variables stay the same, meaning that X2 stay the same. So what that means. So let's say that if we want to uh, predict or explain the change in the monthly income based on working years and job level, then we might be able to come up with this uh, linear regression formula, 500 multiplied working years plus 600 multiplied job level plus 5,000, which is Y intercept. <clears throat> then this is how we can interpret. One year increase of working years would expect $500 increase in monthly income if the job level stays the same. And this is vice versa. In order to understand 600 multiplied job level, then we can uh, just uh, switch this term uh, to one job level increase of job level would expect $600 increase in monthly income if the working years stay the same. <clears throat> so basically this is what uh, we are talking about by using a diagram, but this multiple linear regression actually can do it for you. So let's try to do it um, here. So we create this, uh, created this uh, linear regression model. And all we need to do is go to the predictor variable, just click on it. And then right now, the only the job level is uh, selected. And then we can actually add the uh, total working years. So now we have two variables. And I click on OK button and then run to view the prediction model. And here we have the job level and total working years. And then it slightly changed. Uh, I'm going to actually duplicate and then create one more with only total working years. So for example, let's say like if I remove the job level and create the working, only the working years. And then it seems like when the working years increase and the monthly income kind of steadily like increase, right? And then this gray is the actual values, actual mean value for each section. And it's almost like uh, along with actual value. Prediction model, actual value seems like kind of going along the same way. But when you have job level and the total working years, all the sudden here, that predicted value is not increasing along with the actual values. And that is because the change with the basic difference between this gray, which is actual, and the predictive values are not explained by the change by of the total working years. Instead, that is explained by the job level. And when you look at the job level, the predicted values and actual values are very um, along each other. It's very similar, uh, across each other. 
And that's because probably in this, uh, in this data, job level is the one who is actually really have a lot of influence on the amount of income. But total working years, just a little bit. It's almost like kind of a flat. And then now, here's the important question. Is it, it's almost flat. Does that mean that total working years doesn't have any uh, impact or doesn't have any relationship with the monthly income? And that's where you can actually go to the coefficient tab. This is basically the visualized version of this coefficient table. But when you go to the coefficient uh, shins, uh, it's visualized. It's kind of easier to understand. And then when you look at it here, job level, the coefficient 3,788, that's the increase of the monthly income when you have the job level increase for one point or one level. And the total working years is also, there's a $46. So like the one year, uh, you know, longer you stay at this company, you expect $46 um, increase in monthly income. Uh, but, you know, like you always have like a job level increase, right? Like I said, maybe like if you wait for like 10 years and you're doing a good job and you get the job level going up, then you get uh, this jump as well. But if it's only, if the job level doesn't change and then just you spend extra year, you expect this much of the money. It's tiny. But here's the important thing. This $46, the confidence low high, this is 95% confidence in total. We don't know that real, like a true coefficient, coefficient values, but this is telling you that true values should reside between the 30 and the 61. That means it's not gonna be zero. It's not gonna be co coefficient never, uh, it's not, not never, but it's not gonna, most likely it's not gonna be zero. So that means there is some degree of uh, uh, relationship between these two, just uh, total working years alone, even without job level. But it's a tiny, and that's what we are getting now. But you can go uh, gray color, which is like if the p-value is 0.05, uh, less than zero. Uh, in this case, 4.34, that's a p-value. And then, but uh, notice that like e minus nine at the very right-hand side, that means 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.0, then you repeat like nine times, 0 0.0000000, then 434. So it's very tiny numbers. Uh, so it's almost kind of closer, closer to zero. <clears throat> So therefore, the less, the smaller the p-value is, the, then you, uh, it's easier to reject that null hypothesis. In this case, null hypothesis, there's no relationship between total working years and monthly income. So rejecting the null hypothesis, meaning there is a relationship, it's kind of alternative. The p-value is always a little confusing. In that case, forget about the p-value uh, p thing, uh, just let's remember the confidence interval, which is my favorite. Uh, so the coefficient, true coefficients should be residing in between 61 to 30, and not zero. And zero means the slope is zero. There's no uh, change uh, based on the change in the working years. <clears throat> okay, so this now, like we have two, but when you go back to the summary view, so this is the last part. I know that like, we are kind of almost over the time. Um, so here's the monthly income, and then we sort it by correlation. We can sort by the R square. The, the reason I like sorting by the R square is because R square is the square of the correlation. So even the negative or positive, I don't care, as long as the strong correlation, either, either direction, then R square is better. But also, uh, the, when the variable, the, we call it predictor variable, uh, the job role is categorical, it's numeric. And in the categorical, we don't have this correlation number there is no uh, way to uh, calculate this correlation. So, so then if you sort by the correlation, this character or the categorical tend to be uh, listed at the bottom. Then, but you know, we, all we want to know is the relations, strength of the relationship. So we can use R square. Um, so when you look at here uh, from job level, job role, total working years, age, and just focus on this um, uh, R square, and it seems to be, S stronger, uh, age is kind of small, and then there's others, uh, maybe start date as well when you uh, join the company. But let's focus on this four, and then it seems like these four variables have, you know, some degree of relationship with monthly income. Then why don't we build the linear regression model? Because maybe the age, job role, job level uh, stay the same. Maybe total working years alone might not have any relationship with monthly income. And we want to investigate that. Basically, same thing. We want to extend that to uh, four variables. And in that case, we can create a linear division model uh, uh, all together. 
And then now here, predict a variable. We have those four variables. And the target variable is still monthly income. And it seems like a job level. You see like slight uh, difference from the gray line or the actual values. And that is because that difference is explained by maybe job role, working years, and age. And then when you look at here though, like age is almost like flat, flatter than the total working years. We thought total working years, I thought working years is flat, but it turned out age is even flatter. And then when you go to the coefficient, you want to check, hey, if that, you know, almost flat, does that even have any meaning? And the age, when you look at here, is a gray color, which is less than P, uh, 0 0.05 p-value or the 5% p-value. You can actually change this setting from the property. I'm going to go with the default. <clears throat> And then when you look at the coefficient confidence interval, it's actually stepping on a zero, meaning the range is minus 11 to five. So with 95%, uh, it might be zero. And um, well, um, it, we, we can't reject the, the possibility of uh, the slope happen to be zero here. So um, <clears throat> with a 95% confidence interval. So that means, is my probably like not the important uh, factor when you want to predict monthly income or uh, <clears throat> yeah uh, we, we, when we are talking about uh, relationship and then if you want to but here's one thing we got to be careful so which variable have the most influence or uh, impact on the monthly income or the strongest relationship with the monthly income some people tend to think, hey, these are the two super strong. Uh, maybe here, total working is small because of the height. Um, that's a mistake. Uh, this, co this is a coefficient uh, estimate. Nothing to do with um, uh, strengths because that unit is different. So for example, from the job level, from the manager to let's say a different job role, it's, there's a significant change because you're changing the job compared to working years is like if you don't do anything, like you just one year you wait and then you have one year increase, right? So the unit is different, job level as, also as well. So you gotta be careful about that. So if you wanna compare which variables have more or has stronger relationship or more a stronger indicator when you wanna predict the monthly income, then that's where you wanna go to the importance. And this is where you can see um, the uh, importance of each variable. And by looking at here, job level is absolutely like uh, sort of like a, um, standing out. That means in this company, monthly income can be explained by the job level a lot. And then job role as well, when the job role change from like maybe manager, or sales executive or something like that, there is some difference as, there as well. Total working years, a little bit, I mean, better than uh, if you work longer, but at the end of the day, job level is, uh, has played a stronger role. The age, you know, forget it. I mean, it's not much of the age. It really, if anything, it matter, what well, it matter is the working years, how many work, how many years you work on this comp, uh, this company. Okay. So, but you know, this is not the conclusion. The conclusion is not like, hey, so therefore, when you have the job level, uh, change, you, you know, you can change the monthly income. You know, the, this is, these are the information will help you to start building the hypothesis around what makes the monthly income change or increase or decrease. And then you want to, uh, you know, maybe uh, observe, uh, you know, more like kind of going deeper to test that um, causal relationship or just to happen to be the correlation relationship. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it for today. And um, what it's, so we talk about that monthly income. And what we didn't talk about, though, <clears throat> we've been looking at this monthly income as a target or the subject of our interest, right? But as you see, there are a lot different types of data types, such as, for example, attrition. Attrition is like this employee has left the company or not. This is logical. And if the target is logical or your interest is logical variable or the logical data type variable, that you want to do slightly different things, but you do the same thing, but you want to look at the slightly different numbers or uh, the information. Uh, so that's the next uh, session's topic. Next session's topic is we're going to explore, explore how to investigate and understand the relationship when the target variable is logical data type. 
And it's similar thing, and you know, confidence interval comes in and hypothesis test, but different type of hypothesis test, which is called chi-square test. And then instead of linear regression, we're going to use a logistic regression to uh, build a prediction model to understand, uh, investigate the relationship further. <clears throat> okay. And the next seminar is not the next week, but it's going to be the second week of February, uh, February 10th, Wednesday, same time. Um, so if you're interested in, please uh, join. And uh, you can find from exporty.io, go to learn, online seminar, same place. And then you can find the next seminar uh, detailed information as well. I'm sure that like, you're going to uh, receive my email uh, as well. Okay, that's it for today. Um, you're already five minutes over, so I'm not sure uh, you guys are all there. Uh, if you have any questions, please post in the chat window or unmute yourself and then please um, ask me. Uh, any questions?